Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Morning Devo with your brother DJ Sam Rock. It's good to have you with me. Amen. I'm excited because um, before I got saved, right? And I want you to scan that code right in front of you. Did you give your life to Jesus? Scan that code and find out if you're truly saved. But anyway, before I got saved, man, I was a party head. I was, you know, all into it. And when I got saved, I thought, listen, uh, it's all over. The party's over, right? I was like, man, this is going to be a boring life. This is going to be this, that, and the third. I'm, I'm going to really regret giving my life to the Lord. And that was a flat out lie, man. I have more, uh, how you call it, more joy now, right? I'm more happy now and have more joy now. And I can party anytime I want, right? The Holy Ghost party style. I don't have to drink. I don't have to smoke. I don't have to get high no more to get into that zone of that party zone anymore, any longer at the same time, right? So I have what God gave me, and that's a born-again experience. So because I, the one sinner, turned my life to the Lord, there was a party in heaven. So we're going to be talking about that party in heaven real quick, reading one scripture out of the Bible, and to see what that all means to everybody that's watching and connecting and listening. So God bless you. My name is Brother DJ Sam Brock, Brother Sam Lopez. God bless you. Amen. And we already have some comments right away uh, about that party. Because listen, um, the Bible says that God will give us the desires of our hearts. So if if that's true, and I believe it's true, then when you come to my mansion in heaven, there's going to be speakers everywhere. You know, we're going to have a party. I'm going to be DJing for all eternity, worshiping the Lord, Holy Ghost party, righteous party, however you want to call it. But it's going to be a good time. There's not going to be no drama, no beef, um, no no lustful thinking, none of that. We're going to have the greatest time of our lives. So we're going to be good, right, in that place. So good morning. Um, let's see some good mornings here. Brother Damon, good morning. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. It's good to see you, my friend and my bro. Brother Mike, what's up? Amen. They're going to be playing the house music too. <laughs> yeah, they go, it's going to be house music. Amen. It's going to be Holy Ghost house music as well. As um, You know, it's going to be great, man. Come through and maybe you could grab a couple of sets while I'm up there. Amen. And my beautiful wife, Uni Lopez, blesses everyone. Amen. For the Morning Devo. So, do me a favor, man. Share this with as many people as you can. And also, if you have any comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, you know, anything like that, right? And just don't be afraid. Don't hesitate to leave it right here on the live chat. Also, if you're listening from the podcast, um, there should be a way to connect with me from whatever platform you're watching or from whatever platform you're listening from. So there should be a way to connect with me. So Let's get together. Let's do this. Let's pray. Let's get right into the scripture. Amen. Uh, I'm excited about this because it, it really turned a lot of things when I first realized this, when I first learned this. It, it changed a lot of my perspective of being a born again believer, right? I thought it was about being lame, being corny, um, not being able to do this, that, and the third. When I first got saved, I said, uh-oh, I dove into a whole bunch of rules that I'm going to start breaking. That's the way I was thinking. I was straight off the street, straight out of that you know, lifestyle um, that, are, that a lot of people right now are enjoying, that are in right now, and I was right in there, man. It wasn't a good time, really, if you really think about it. In hindsight, I was like, wow, I wasn't living in sin. I was actually dying in it. And everybody else was cool with that, you know, until I figured out, listen, this is this something more to life. There has to be more to life than what I'm currently right finding out about, than what I'm currently living, than what I'm currently into right now. There has to be more. I always knew that. Um, but, you know, to gain the courage and to go against the norm, to go against the grain of what everybody else is doing, um, you know, I knew that was auto- was going to automatically point fingers back to me and be like, who do you think you are? You're judging us. You think you're better than us and all that stuff. I knew that was coming, but I was like, you know what? At the expense of all of that, I'd rather see for myself whether or not this whole God thing is true. So that's what I did. Because uh, I did everything the world offered. You know, why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't you do everything the world offers? Because they, they put it and they package it in a pretty box, right? It looks good, smells good, tastes good. Everything about it is good, seems to be good. So in other words, what's bad is considered good and what's good is considered bad. That type of environment, that was me. I was in that environment. What about you? Some people right now are watching and they're still in that environment. And they could care less what I just said. They'd be like, yeah, I'm in that and I'm going to stay in that because there is no God. Well, I was on the 
both ends of the spectrum. I was on the other side where you are right now saying there is no God. I was like, yeah, this is all about us and what we're doing right now. And let's have a good time, party, and just live life, right? And then on the other side, now where I'm at, I'm like, whoa, um, thank you, Jesus, for giving me the grace and mercy to not keep me in, in the dark. Let's leave me there and forget about me. Thank you for shining your light upon my, my life. And now I'm shining this light of Christ upon every single life that's willing to listen. No forcing here, no debating, no none, none of that. It's the word of God over my life and the word of God over your life that really transforms a life. So where, before I pray, um, a new thing I have on the screen that you give your life to Jesus. If you ever wondered, are you really saved? Scan that barcode, scan that QR code and find out for yourself. Take a test. You can do it after the morning Devo if you want to stay with us. Amen. So for the podcast listeners, I'll leave you a link so you could get to um, what I'm talking about. Amen. I just thought about that now. Podcast listeners ain't going to see no box with a, a QR code, but I'll send you a link so that way you could Make sure you save. Did you give your life to Jesus? That's the question, right? So, Father, I thank you for today. I thank you that for one sinner who repents, there's a party in heaven, a Holy Ghost party, celebration. And for the people that are self-righteous, that are righteous now, that seem to never stray away from the church and whatever they do, bless them in the name of Jesus as well. I just pray, Lord God, that you would give us the fullness of who you are in this life, on this side of eternity. I thank you for your Holy Spirit. I thank you for moving us in the right direction. I thank you for speaking to us today through your word. I thank you that every single person that's connecting right now represents you or represents their family or represents the very old selves. So, Lord God, for whatever reason, someone is not in contact or not in a relationship with you, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you yourself will reveal yourself to those people, to them right now in the name of Jesus, the same way or even greater, um, do a greater thing that you have done in my life, do a greater thing for them, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, that you are real, that you are purposely planning this day for every single life that's out there. I pray, Lord God, life over everything that concerns life and death and destruction to anything that's trying to take us out from your presence, take us out from your your church, take us out from the body. I pray against that in the name of Jesus. So therefore, I set forth arc wind angels, ministry angels to every single person, every single household, every single family from the very youngest family member to the very oldest family member and everybody in between and let's celebrate the fact that if you're born again we're born again tell a friend amen we're going to have a party in heaven and there's already a party in heaven for every single person who repents today there's going to be a big party in heaven for that one sinner that's now saved in jesus name i pray this by faith with thanksgiving amen and amen let's take a minute to share this out i gotta go run my and get my phone my phone is still on my charger so uh, that's not your problem that's mine so i'll run and go get that when we come back we're going to jump into luke chapter 15 luke chapter 15 verse 7 one scripture that will really rock your mind when it comes to this whole heaven thing and whole born again experience i'll be right back This is, woof, that minute, man, goes so fast. It's amazing. So let's get into it. Luke chapter 15, verse 7. Luke 15, 7. The Bible says, in the same way, there is more joy, more joy. So that means there's joy, but there's more joy in heaven over one uno, right? One lost sinner who repents and returns to God than over 99 others who are righteous and haven't strayed away. I'm going to read that as an amplified because that's deep. So listen, in the same way, there is more joy 
in heaven over one lost sinner. Why do you think there's a whole celebration when somebody gets converted or transformed? You know, a lot of people say the conversion word, the converted word is a term for money and for other things. But listen, when I hear about conversion, I know what that means because I was converted. But it's more like transformed, renewed, reborn, born again. Um, not perfect, although there are my brothers and sisters in Christ that said we're already a perfect. Um, and then when we make mistakes, there's a dilemma in the perfection thing. But listen, we're being perfected for sure. Guaranteed 100%. Uh, I could testify I know I'm not there yet, um, but wherever God has taken me, I'm willing to go. Amplified version, Luke 15, 7. The Bible says, I tell you, oh, wait, I disappeared. Let's get back to it. 15, 7. And I believe that's Jesus speaking. Yep, it's in red. So let's go. Let's start. Let's start from verse number, stay in Luke 15, verse number 3. So you could get a a bigger perspective. So he told them this parable. It's a story. What man among you, if he has a hundred sheep and loses one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost? Right. Because if you're, you know, you have sheep, you want all of them um, in your in your herd, in your in your flock to come. So if you leave with a hundred, you want to come back with a hundred. So if one of those are missing does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost, searching until he finds it. I'm I'm stubborn like that. If I have 100 sheep, I want 100 sheep coming back. So if I lose one, I'm going to go looking for that one. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he gets home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors saying to them, Rejoice with me because I have found my lost sheep. In other words, I left with 100, I came back with 100. I tell you, in the same way, there will be more joy in heaven, more joy than finding a lost sheep, more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who have no need of repentance. So shout out to all the righteous people in the church. Amen. You never strayed. Praise the Lord. Oh, but there's more joy for one sinner who repents. There was more joy for when you first repented and when I first repented in heaven than it is that we're righteous and we're having straight. Amen. The good news is on both ends. You're righteous. You haven't strayed. You're righteous because of the righteousness of Christ in us and you and in me. Uh, I didn't do nothing to deserve the righteousness. But God, uh, you know, accounted me righteous because of what Jesus did in my life. That's good. I didn't stray away. But for one sinner, that's why it's so important. To to be who you are, right? God created you uniquely, you, to be who you are so you can reach another person, you know, without having to force anything. Amen. I can't reach everybody. That's for sure. That's guaranteed. You can't reach everybody, but collectively, there's somebody for each one, reach one. There's somebody that can reach this person, somebody that can reach that person because of who we are. You know, I like to, when I talk about Jesus, it's like testimonial style. Like I'm always testifying of what God has done in my life because I know for sure that it's true in my life. It might not be true for other people's life. I don't know their testimonies, but I know my testimony. And I'm so blown away about the fact that, listen, if God could change me, I'm blown away by that. If he, That means he could change anybody. There's no, there's no one too far, no one too lost, no one too ratchet for God to change. If he changed me, right? So there's a party in heaven. So why do you think this is? Why do you think there's more joy for one sinner who gets saved than there is for 99 people or 99, yeah, 99 righteous ones, amen, who are never straight? It reminds me of the prodigal son, right? Prodigal son tells the dad, listen, give me all your, your, the my inheritance now. In other words, in that society, in that culture, he was basically telling his dad, okay, drop that. I don't care about you. Just give me what's, you know, what's rightfully mine, my inheritance. And that culture, that's what he was really saying. Took the money and what, you know the story. If you don't know the story, read it. Um, it's called The Prodigal Son. And he went out and I think it's in Luke 15 as well. He went out and he just started partying, you know, living a life with women, you know, sex or whatever type of drugs they had at the time because he had all this dinero, right? And he was going out there. And he found himself um, towards the end eating with the pigs. 
Yeah, you know, you ever found yourself in a situation like that? Before Jesus, I found myself in situations that I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> and you start off, you go you go out, you have money, and that, towards the end of the night, you're like, um, you're with the pigs. Like, you're, you're, what the heck's going on? So he came to his, re- he came to his senses, the Bible says. In other words, he woke up out of whatever he was doing, and then he said, wait a minute, why am I out here with the pigs when I used to have a house with servants, a father who loved me, a brother, a family, uh, you know, I could have just stood there. What am I doing? So when he came to his senses, he went back. And when the father saw him from afar, the father picked up his, whatever you call those things that they used to wear at the time, picked up his pants, in, in other words, and ran towards his son. That was countercultural during that time. And told his servants, listen, get the get the penil out, get everything ready. You know, we're going to have a big party because... My son is coming back. He was lost, but now he's fine. He was blind, but now he can see. And the older brother, the one who never strayed away, the one who was in righteousness with the dad and, you know, in community with the dad all that time had had feelings about that. He got into his feelings and said, why are you celebrating for um, my brother, right? My little brother, when I've been here all this time. So in other words, he didn't recognize that he was already with the in the presence of his father, he was already there, so he could have started. You know, maybe he could have prayed for his brother. I don't know if he didn't. I don't know if he did. The Bible doesn't say that. Or maybe he could have searched out for his brother. I don't know if he did. I don't know if he didn't. The Bible doesn't say. Or maybe he could have, instead of worrying about himself, he could have been celebrating also that his brother came back. And some people in the church could care less. I'm sorry. This is my opinion. It's not in scripture. But some people in the church, churches. The universal church, because I know everybody said, what are you talking about? Um, Transformation church? No, I'm talking about church in general. Some people in the church could care less if somebody gets saved or whatever, because they want what's, what's rightfully theirs. How do I know that? Because I've been in meetings where collaborative churches, <clears throat> this is not all the churches all over the world, obviously, don't get, you know, don't make this to a big thing, what I'm saying. But I've been in meetings of collaborative churches around my area, and around other states, um, that they can't agree on one thing. Right. Somebody uh, somebody gets a revelation. Somebody gets an idea from the Lord. And for instance, I was part of this thing that's ended up in an arena. It was all God. Right. In an arena. And it was supposed to get 10,000 men in this arena, in this, um, you know, event center and locally in my area. So the man of God that was given this vision, that was given this dream, when things started happening towards it, um, you know, he was getting this type of. Uh, attitude from established righteous people and leaders in the community that who do you think you are you're not even ordained you're not this you're not that how are you going to do this you know we need to be involved if you know how much it, I was at those meetings so I'm not I know what I'm talking about and I was scratching my head like wait um, we're trying to reach souls aren't you trying to reach souls this man of God although he might not be credentialed at the time but now he's credentialed now he is a pastor or whatever and whatever they said he wasn't, he is now. But at the time, it was hurting me. I know he was hurt, um, but there was a group, there was a core of us that kept on praying, stayed in the faith, kept on encouraging him because I'm like, why would somebody not celebrate this man that got this big vision to fill up a whole uh, event center to get 10,000 men in unity, right? And why wouldn't that not be celebrated? But some rights people said, no, if I'm not involved, you know, you know, our, our plaque is not there. If this, that, and the third, um, there was a, a point of that event that they, we were told we weren't supposed to like promote our church because we didn't want to offend other churches. And, you know, so when I went up, I couldn't really promote. They just asked, how long have you been ministering and what, you know, how long you've been in the ministry or whatever. That's all they asked. That's all they wanted an answer for. So I couldn't rep this church and that church and shout out people because there was a limited amount of time. And so we had to say what we could only say and minister how we were ministering in gospel rap. And then when I when afterwards I found out that some people felt a certain way because I didn't mention where I was from and this down the third. Listen, that's secondary stuff. The the main purpose of those type of events that and that event that I was involved in, amen, and that I got an opportunity and maybe it might be the only opportunity, I DJ'd uh in the recess session and the you know, when people were away, I DJ'd in an arena. That was big for me, amen. And it was gospel music, ladies and gentlemen, hip hop, gospel, house, gospel, all of that. I was playing some good music, and there was people listening, so that was spreading around, amen. And uh, it opened doors for so many people 
to be in that type of environment, at least for one time in their lives. I know it might be the only time in my life. I don't know. Maybe um, God has something else. But that's why I know some righteous people could care less. Because, listen, if we're after souls, let's come together. Let's get these souls. Amen? I'm an evangelist, so I'm so bent on reaching souls. is incredible. And some people say, oh, be careful. It's not all about reaching souls. I know. But God put that in my heart. Amen? I'm, I'm on fire to reach souls for the Lord. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's who I am. Nobody's going to change that. If God wants to change it, he'll change it. He'll, he'll rip that um, you know, desire out of my heart if he wants to, spiritually, right? But he left it there for a purpose and a plan and a reason. So... I don't know why I went down that road. But in the same way, there's more joy. So why do you think there's more joy for one sinner who gets saved than for 99 who are righteous and never straight? Amen? Because I'm, I'm thinking, man, I hope I don't get like one of those people in 99 that's so righteous that um, could care less about souls anymore. Because, listen, I'm in the house of God. I never strayed. So I don't know what's going on outside of the house of God. I need to know what's going on outside of the house of God. Because when there's a party in heaven, amen, um, the angels are partying. Like they're doing what they, you know, they're celebrating the fact that some soul on this planet Earth is getting ready to get into an eternity, an eternity with the Lord in heaven. Amen. Because this is our training ground right here on planet Earth. Amen. So when you're saved, you're born again, you feel something. I can't say an angel was going to come to appeal. Some people have different testimonies. My testimony, an angel didn't come. But I tell you, the next day after uh, I prayed a prayer, drunk and high, forgot to change me. The next day when I woke up, I felt something, boom, wake up in my soul, wake up in my body, wake up in my mind, wake up. My eyes were uh, like could see again my ears could hear and my my speech was already starting to change and i was like yeah something just happened and that was probably part of the part of the party that was happening in heaven amen so you know imagine a party in heaven i wasn't there to dj my own party but when i get there i'm gonna say hey where the angels that party when i got saved and when they come i'm gonna start throwing down man djing for them because I'm be like, thank you, Jesus, for rescuing me, saving me, for giving me this born again experience. Now, all those misconceptions I had about being a, a born again believer, all those misconceptions I had about going to church and believing and following Christ, they were all misconceptions. I thought I was going to have to dress up a certain way. I thought I was going to have to just follow rules and regulations. I thought I was going to have to change who I was, per my personality. I thought I was going to have to stop listening to music, stop dancing, stop DJing, stop rapping. I thought I was going to have to do all of that. I, was, I thought that was all going to come to a stop. I know there's a lot of people right now that's thinking that. That's, oh, if I give my life to the Lord, man, I'm going to lose all my friends. That might be true, though. I'm not going to lie to you and say, you know, all your friends are going to be cool with you being a born-again believer. Um, you might lose some people, amen, but at the same time, you're being built up, and now when you're built up and strong enough and have the courage and boldness to preach to those people again, in love, please don't do what I did in the first two years I was saved, I was speaking the truth, but not, there was no love involved, so I was, people were like keeping me at arm's distance, like, yo, I don't want to hear that, because I was approaching them like so righteously and so judgmental, um, but now I hope I changed a little bit, right? You know, be be nice on me. Don't send comments. Oh, you're always calling us out. I'm sorry if that's how you feel. But listen, I don't think I approach people anymore the way I used to approach people when I was two years old in the faith. I think I approach people right now with love. You know, I see people that are on the other side and, you know, they're deep into sin, or whatever. And I'll embrace them in Jesus. I'll embrace them in love and I'll encourage them um, to search out who Jesus, who God really is in their life. Not in my life because, you know. I could go around and say, oh, God did this for me. God did. But what does that mean for somebody else? Sometimes some people are like, I don't care what God did in your life. I was that person that when people used to preach about Jesus, I said, oh, that's cool for you. He did that for you. Praise God. You know, go ahead. Go to church or whatever. But for me, he didn't do nothing for me. Until I came to my senses and realized, wait a minute, maybe he's not doing anything for me because I'm not asking him to do anything in my life. Ooh, I wish I had that effect with the light bulb above my head that could be a thought right now for somebody maybe he's not doing nothing for you because you're not asking him to do anything in your life could that be so what are the benefits of being one of the righteous ones there are benefits for being one of the righteous ones the one of the righteous ones who never strayed away who haven't strayed away who's still in the home and the house of the lord who's still in contact and connection and relationship with the father praise the lord amen and that's a good place to be 
there's all benefits. Benefits, you'll get, you know, blessed. You'll get, uh, you know, you're being delivered. And you already are delivered, by the way, from anything that the enemy throws your way. Um, you're part of the body of Christ. You might be in leadership. You might be uh, a newbie in the body of Christ. Whatever the situation, you are counted as one of the righteous ones. Amen. This benefit is tremendous. I can't even tell you how many benefits there are because then this, it would take hours and hours and hours. The, the word of God speaks about so many benefits of being in the kingdom of God that is unbelievable. So unbelievable that people think it's not true. Right. Some people say it's too good to be true. So therefore it's not. Listen, God is good. Period. And that's not too, even though it might be too good to be true that God is good because of all the evil that happens in this world. Uh, in my area, a next town over next to me, amen, 65 shootings, 65 days straight. And there was a shooting the other night. Somebody got killed. So it, it, it stops you in your tracks of like, God, we need you. People are dying from these gun shootings and all this other stuff. So I don't even live in the city that I was called into for a city meeting. I just went because I'm after souls. It don't matter if they're in two cities away from me. But my brother's city or my sister's city that's right next to me, I could walk to my sister's city from where I live. Uh, I'm concerned. Why? Because my daughter's going to start going to uh, a school in that city as well. And safety is going to be huge. Uh, I don't want to be having to worry about gunshots in her school and people shooting, getting shot up in her school. You know, so uh, we're gathering together. Um, we're planning something out. And there's a lot of passion behind it, a lot of resources behind it, a lot of preachers in it, right? Not everybody's a believer. Not everybody has to be a believer to come together um, with one voice and one purpose and one plan to help the community. Not everybody has to be a Christian. It would be, in my opinion, more powerful if everybody was Christian, amen, and believed in the Lord Jesus. But through that, through serving our communities, we show um, that we are um, concerned about souls, souls, lives, families, right? We're concerned. I'm concerned. So I was there and I'm glad I was given an opportunity to show up because now I could hear the heart of that city, of the leadership in that city, you know, crying out for help and planning to do things that's going to make differences. And it didn't matter what party we were from, Democrat, Republican, it didn't matter. And what matters is souls. And that should still matter. And for people who used to always call upon me to do these community events, listen, um, I'm going to have to call you out real quick. Just real quick. It's a light thing. Nobody probably will know or care who I'm talking about or what I'm talking about. But when you used to call me out to do these community events, it didn't matter whether I was Republican, Democrat, Independent, uh, whatever. Now that there's a lot of people found out my my party that I chose, amen, um, politically, now you're not calling me because, oh, you know, we're opposed. Uh, please stop the nonsense. I'm still after souls. You're still after souls for the most part. The people I've seen in the community are still after souls. So if you're going to lose funding because you're going to partner with somebody at a, on a different party and you're worrying about that more than you're worrying about the effectiveness of gathering souls and getting souls into heaven for a big party event, um, I suggest you take that to the Lord in prayer and ask him, you know, where is that coming from? It's not, I could give you a clue though. It's not coming from the Lord. Okay. In the same way, there is one is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who repents and returns to God, returns to God. So therefore, they might have had a glimpse of God, or experience with religion, went to church, but they didn't get the connection. So they left, they strayed, they got out of um, the environment that was good for them, and they went into a bad environment. But if that person or those people repent and turn back to God, right, there's going to be a big party in heaven. And guess who's going to be uh, the star of that party? You and me. Well, I already did it. So you, if you're uh, repenting right now, if you're going to plan on repenting and turning from your wickedness to the righteousness of God, amen, repenting just means that you stop what you're doing right now that you know is not pleasing God. It's not good for you at all. It's not good for your family, your friends, your relationships. You stop in your tracks and you turn. To the one who is good, the one who can satisfy your soul 100%, the one who is righteous, the one who loves you, the one who gives you the born again experience, the one who gives you eternal life. You stop and turn to him, God, through Jesus. It's a party up in heaven, man. Um, you got you got lights up in heaven. Maybe, maybe, just maybe you'll see a light show in, in the clouds in the heavens 
for you. Maybe God will allow you to see, you know, something, you know, the electricity in the in the sky, electricity in the stars. Maybe he'll allow you to see something so that way you could be encouraged to say, whoa, they, they having a party for me? You know, and then you're going to be eager to see other people get celebrated as they repent and turn to the Lord. Amen. So what are the benefits of being one of the righteous ones? The benefits in my um, humble opinion is that we get everything that God offers once we're in right standing with God through Jesus, the son. Then we have Holy Spirit living inside of us, the kicker that will lead us into all truth and remind us of everything that has been taught to us, that's been said, that we read in the scriptures. And at any spur of the moment, he'll give you that supernatural high. You'll realize you don't need drugs. You don't need this no more. You don't need that no more. All you need is whoever, you know, all you need is God, the one who says, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus. Amen. Yeshua HaMashiach, the righteous one, the anointed one of God. Amen. Wonderful counselor, prince of peace, right? Almighty God, him, the savior, Jesus of Nazareth, him. He's good, good enough. Amen. <laughs> Excuse me. He'll give you that joy unspeakable. So I'm out of here. That's all I had. In the same way, there's more joy, more joy, more joy. People want more of something. Why don't you get more of joy? Return, repent, turn to God. Amen. The world satisfies for a little bit. I'm not going to lie. Pleases you for a little bit. Gives you that sin that <clears throat> for a season. It's good for a season. I have to admit it. It's in the scriptures. Why wouldn't I admit it? But when that season is over, woo, get ready. You know, consequences for sin. Um, a lot of it equals death, right? Not all sins leads to death. But um, if in the, in the main scope of things, sin leads to death. And you don't want, why would, listen, we're all going to die anyway. Why, why die not trying? Or why die in defeat? Uh, when I die, I'm going to die in victory. Amen? And truly, a Christian truly don't die. We just change locations as a born-again believer. From this side of eternity to the next. And then I'm going to enter into the fullness of who God created me to be. And not only that, headphones ready, DJ equipment there. And when I open that door to that mansion, I'm going to be like, oh, man. Uh, uh, let's start sending out flyers if that's possible in heaven. Send out flyers and um, come see me, right? So in the meantime, let's preach the gospel. Let's get souls um, in the direction that they need to go. There's people out there that are dying right now. There's a big music fest in my area, one of the largest in the Northeast, if not the largest in the Northeast. And I'm here. I'm not going through there. First of all, it's too hot. I'm not really a heat and walk person like that. And uh, from what I'm hearing, it's packed every day. A lot of activity, no mass, no nothing. Um, they're just doing, going about what they do, right? And there's a lot of my brothers and sisters who are going in there and are, I don't know, maybe you're, besides the, the food, maybe you're going in there for whatever reason. Just be careful what reasons you're going to the music fest for if you're born again. Amen. Um, shine your light and don't get it dulled out by everything that's happening around you. Don't be influenced by what's going on in there. Um that is not of God. Amen. Don't be influenced by that. Be an influence. So if you're going to show up, show up with a plan and a reason and a purpose. Don't just show up to do what everybody else is doing. That's a shout out to all the young believers who go there because they're so drawn um, to seeing what's going on with the people who are doing their thing and their element. Remember, that's, that's their element. If they're not born again, that's their element. Last time I checked, it's not a Christian event over there. So be careful, my brothers and my sisters. So God bless you. God keep you. And remember always that God... He's always good. Amen. Peace.